So, as we sit here at ASRM 2015, means the year's coming to an end. Uh, as you look back the, on this year and recent changes and recent presentations, what really strikes you as hot from this year? You know, it's been really an exciting time to be a reproductive endocrinologist. We've developed um, evidence over the last year of things that are going to make a big impact, I think, on our patient's success. One of the things that we're seeing that in the past um, we suspected but we didn't have evidence for is now evidence that um, pre-implantation genetic screening of embryos not only really helps you select the embryo with the greatest potential to implant, but it both is cost effective, reducing by more than 50% the average cost of having a baby by IVF, which I think is wonderful, amazing. Um, for the patients. At the same time, um, the, there's a lot less stress for the patient. The duration of their treatments are much shorter. So I think as well, that's very exciting. And then at the same time, um, there's really been much more of an acceptance of something that we actually were one of the first centers to start, and that's in vitro maturation of human oocytes, where a lot more centers have sort of started to jump on board and do this, because it's another option um, to offer patients who can't necessarily afford traditional treatments because you avoid a lot of the cost of the medication. And it's been demonstrated that the success rates with in vitro maturation have gotten a lot better as well over time. So I think over the last year, those are some things that have really come to the fore forefront. So it's really interesting. I mean, you're capturing some things at the laboratory level and some things at the patient level. So it really is an exciting time. Yeah, I think it's a great time. Um, as you look forward to 2016, 2017, what do you hope to be able to do more of? What techniques or technologies do you hope to have at hand? Well, you know, the transition from the evidence related to um, pre-implantation genetic screening of embryos and the ease of having it is something that's transitioning, where the equipment is getting a lot less expensive, so it's becoming something that's a lot easier to offer to your patients. And I think uh, that has become something that we're going to watch happen over this year. There have been, um, as well, um, you know, we're, there's a lot of ease towards patient care that are coming about, which I think are nice. Like they've transitioned from this year to next, but it's having combined medications that are available, which are very nice. Uh, it helps the patient, it avoids shots. Um, and I think that um, that is something as well that will be helpful for the patient. So it's that personalized approach as well. So, so you're getting right at them, personalized for the patient, personalized for the embryo. So, so um, from when you first started in the field until now, I, I assume it's been a major transition. It, it uh, you know, I've been doing this for 15 years. For the 15 years I've been a reproductive endocrinologist, um, we've had all kinds of introductions of techniques that we couldn't even have thought about before. Um, we did not have accurate ways of testing embryos. In fact, I remember when the first studies came out and I had already been in practice for about five years when the first studies came out and said that, uh, in fact, the traditional fish way of doing analysis of embryos is not very accurate. There's a lot of mosaicism there. And here we're, we're getting to systems that are much more accurate. At the same time, um, we're starting to understand that there are differences in the medications that we use and that you have to really personalize that medication to the patient, that they will perform better as you personalize the medication. You're more likely to have a pregnancy. And at the same time, um, it again alleviates some of the stress for them, as well as the speed that you end up getting them a baby, which is helpful. We've been able to speed it up. And, and I, I really appreciate that you, you talk both in what we saw this year and what we're looking forward about cost. Right? Because it means that I think more and more of the patients who want access to it may have access to it. And it you know, at least in North America, we've always been knowledgeable costs are an issue. And, uh, and I think there's some suggestion that more places in North America are going to get on the bandwagon and cover. And that'll be great for patients. I think that'll actually be great for uh, even the societies we live in in general by increasing the population in ways that we need.
Those are all important things. Yeah. Well, great. Thanks for taking a few minutes well, to my chat. My pleasure.